You are listening to the Call to Action podcast, where we aim to inspire, educate, and inform entrepreneurs and self-starters on tech and tips related to navigating this ever-changing world. Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to episode 48 of the Call to Action podcast. I am your host, Shantae. And today we're having a fireside chat with Ken Biltz and Bambi Summers. Bambi's going to be my co-host again for today's show, guys. So it's going to be a good one. Now, before I bring our guests on to the show, I have a positive mindset affirmation that I'd like to share with you today. And here is the positive mindset affirmation for episode 48 of the Call to Action podcast. I open my heart and let me to become the best version of myself. I'm going to read that again. I open my heart and let me to become the best version of myself. I don't have the author of that, but I do have these on plainmindfully.com where you can actually purchase your very own set of printable positive mindset affirmation cards. And these are great for manifesting and also for putting on your vision board, which is how I use them and also on my desk because they're really good with starting my day off with some really good energy. So visit planmindfully.com to learn more. If you missed episode 47 of the Call to Action podcast, as always, it is a must listen. My guests for that episode are both Shanae Chase and J.D. Edwards, who are both active members in the writing community. And they've both been on the podcast before. They shared some really new um, and exciting news with me on the show. So take a listen to this clip from episode 47 of the Call to Action podcast. One benefit I had is that, you know, I'm a uh, Anglophile. You know, I, yeah, I'm an, Amer- an American, but I just absorb British literature and I love it and watch British, t- British, British TV shows, comedies, uh, you know, th- that's my son and keeping up appearances and you know, <laughs> faulty towers, red dwarf, you, you name it. You know, I, I like those type of shows. So I had a strong vocabulary when it came to British slang. And, you know, I kind of knew what some of the terms were. Sometimes if something confused me, though, I just go to a Australian dictionary. Again, you can hear the full episode on CTA marketing dot biz when you're there Click on podcast on the main menu to access that episode as well as past episodes. As mentioned in the intro, I have Ken Biltz and Bambi Summers. Again, guys, Bambi is becoming a pro here on the Call to Action podcast. I think I might have to hire her as my co-host. Um, she is a published author of romance novels. And also Ken is also an author. He is married with six children and have nine grandchildren, and they live in Northeast Ohio. He has two pesky dogs and one majorly finicky cat. He's looking forward to getting back to woodworking, gardening, camping, and having fun with the grandkids. So everyone, please join me in welcoming Ken and Bambi back to the Call to Action podcast. How are you all doing today? Hi, great. I'm doing good, Chante. Glad to be here. Yes, I'm so glad to have you here, Bambi. I'm really like, I think you're like now my co-host. I mean, what do you think? (laughs) I'll come on anytime you want me to and be your co-host. Thank you. I'd love that. I really would love that. (laughs) <laughs> now, Ken, this is this is Ken's first time being on the show. So, Ken, with my show, I like to have icebreakers. It's a really good way for people to get to know you and know more about you. So the icebreaker that I have for you today is for you to share with us, what is your favorite season? My favorite season is summer because I'm, I'm a freeze baby. I don't like to be cold. I can handle the heat. I just can't handle the cold. So the summer is my time of the year. You know what? I, I you know I think I like that too. I like all of the all the seasons. I think every season has something that I like. But I think my favorite probably is summer. What about you, Bambi? Actually, I'm a winter baby. 
I I love the cold. Really? Yeah, I can't handle the heat. <laughs> About probably eight years ago, we had central air put in our house, and that was the best decision that we've ever made. So <laughs> I can't stand the heat as I get older. So oh, wow, I like the snow. wow. I like the quiet of winter. You know, it, the snow deadens all the sound, mm-hmm. and it's just so peaceful. And I'll, also, I'm a nester, and so, you know, I put my nest around me and it's uh, I, I just like winter so much. You know, that's, that's interesting. I, I do like that about winter. I love the snow and it, that's why I like Ohio because we get the, the benefit of all four seasons. Exactly. Yeah. So the snow, the snow is beautiful, but it's just, if it wasn't so cold, I would be able to manage it better. Yeah. 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 Cool. Cool. All right, guys. So tell me, Tell me about how you two met. How how did this all come together? Because you guys, I know, Ken, you've published a book. Bambi, you've done some things with them. Let us know how this all came about. Well, we, Bambi, Bambi and I, along with uh, another gentleman, Stoney DeGuider, we created a writing group through from uh, uh, on Twitter. We met on Twitter. And we just talked about, let's get together and meet and, so eventually the three of us did, and we got a couple other people in with us. Some are with us, some aren't. <laughs> so they're come and go. But, uh, and then in one of our meetings, Bambi had mentioned that she was considering getting back into editing something she had done in the past. So I knew I needed an editor, so I definitely hired Bambi, and I, I'm glad I did. She's done a good job for me. Well, thank you. She's, Actually, she's edited all three of my books. Ken is the reason that I am secure basically in my editing. Um, I, I talked to him. I hadn't, I, I wasn't editing at the time. And I said to him, let me do your book. And it's going to allow me to see if I like it and to see if I'm any good at it. So he loved what I did. And I ended up, like he said, editing all three of his books. And that's when I started my editing business. So if it wasn't for Ken, I don't know that I'd be doing what I'm doing. Wow, Ken, that's uh, that's major. It is. I was Bambi's um, icebreaker for editing. <laughs> yes, you were. <laughs> because I can bounce things. Ken and I are good enough friends that I can bounce things off of him and say, "Do you do you think this will work? Do you think this will work?" You know, and and really, when I got started, I was a little unsure of myself, and he basically gave me the confidence to do it. That's awesome. Now, when you talk about editing, I know that people have their different styles and even as authors, because I've learned a lot talking to you all. I've learned so much. (laughs) So, but now I have a question about the editing process because I hear different stories. Um, Because sometimes when someone says they're editing someone else's book, then you have the author that's like, you know, do I have to make these changes? And the editor is like, well, no, you don't, but you know, but you have suggestions. So how did you guys work that out? Um, I, when I edit a book, I put in a lot of, first of all, the grammar and stuff. I mean, it's, it's no nonsense. Of of course, you're going to accept those edits, but when you edit a book, they are, the edits are in there where you can accept or reject. And so, and there's also a place like a bar at the side where you can write, Hey, you know, in this part, this is what I would do. And there's suggestions. So if the author likes the suggestion, they can go ahead and accept it or they can tweak it or whatever they'd like to do. But no author should ever feel afraid of an editor. They're not going to change your book and say, you have to do this because it's your book. It's not the editor's book. And the editor should be editing in your voice, not theirs. And I think um, hopefully I've mastered that. And, um, and Ken definitely has his own wonderful style. I love, love his books. And so, so no one should be afraid of an editor. (laughs) Well, and Bambi's good too, when when it comes to editing, when she's like, she said about having the comment section off the side, when she puts something in there, Mm -hmm. if I didn't choose to use that, I would usually discuss it with her and, and discuss why I did it the way I did it, you know, and we talk it through and, you know, some of them I accepted, some of them I didn't. But just, you know, that's what the editor's there for. Okay. Okay. 
to help you think better. And sometimes um, the author will, like Ken said, he would tell me why he did something. And now sometimes I hadn't seen it that way. So once he explained it to me, it was like, oh, well, then that makes perfect sense. Yes, do not take my suggestion. You know, so it, yes. it really works out between the author and the We've editor. We've had several of those. Yeah. Yeah, we've had several of them. We did. Good, good. So as an editor, you don't just like make the changes and say, or make the suggestions, I have to say, and then send it over to the person. To me, it sounds like it's better when you have a conversation, like you guys are just sharing how you did. Like, Bambi, the you would share something. The, mm -hmm. the conversation works. It, it definitely works for me, that's for sure. It does. Okay. And okay. even people that I actually never speak to, I go through their edits twice. So in other words, I... I edit their book and then I send it to the author and the author accepts and rejects and writes back to me and does all that stuff. And then they send it back and I do it again because I'm amazed at how much you can miss the first time. So I always do it twice and they always have a chance to talk to me and we go back and forth. Okay, good. Good. Now, Ken, tell me about your, your books that you wrote. Or did you write one or two? I've written three. Three. Three books. Okay, so now we got to go back. <laughs> tell us about your <laughs> book. Because <laughs> I want to know what inspired you to write. Um, what inspired me to write is that I just had wanted to write for a long time and never did. You know, I'd always thought about it here and there. And I'd get an idea in my head and wouldn't do nothing about it. And then one day I decided to finally do something. I actually started something 20 some years ago and still never finished it. It's still not done today, you know? Um, but then uh, my first book that I did publish was hammers and roses. I, I wrote that over a couple months time and, and I was just writing and putting words on paper is all I was doing. And I started to think, you know, this could probably be a book. So I went online and I researched what does, what, what makes a novel, you know, how, what, how can I make this a novel? And this book was um, a crime drama, and they said crime drama should be 80,000 words. Well, at this point, I was at 65,000 words. I was almost there. Oh, yeah. I, thought, I mm -hmm. thought I can do this. So in the next week or so, I finished it and got it done, and I was all happy that I just wrote a book. You know, so, <laughs> so I was I thrilled with myself, twisting my arm to pat myself on the back, and I hurried up and published it, and that was where I went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> And I, didn't have, I didn't have an editor. <laughs> I, I had family and friends that had read it and said, yeah, that sounds good. That looks good. So I went ahead and published it. Well, that was the biggest thing I heard about on, on the comment sections and the reviews was, you know, I liked the story, but the lack of editing was hard to read. You know, oh, so okay. then once, um, once uh, Bambi and I started working together on my second book, uh, The Gift of the Fallen Sympathy for the Devil, and she, I got her to edit that book and she did a good job. I was very comfortable with her. And, um, I asked her to possibly look at hammers and roses and do that one as well. So she re-edited it for her. I can't say re-edited it. Cause like I said, it wasn't edited in the first place, but she edited it for me. Okay. So after Bambi, after she edited the first book, did you go back and republish it? Yes, I did. I, I republished it. Okay. So it's now it's now a second edition because of the the editor. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. And so it sounds to me like your family and friends played the role of the beta readers, right? They read the book and was kind of give you that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah, That's I, good. To I, I was hoping that they would be. Uh, uh, worthwhile editors, if you know what I mean. Like, you know, the, the suggestions they made to me would have been enough. But yeah. apparently they won't because that was the biggest problem people had with it. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna yeah it's probably good here. to have someone like Bambi on your team. Yeah, I'm going to jump in here because <laughs> I don't think that the person, the normal, the normal, I'm making, you know, air quotes here. The normal person who reads mm -hmm. a book, I don't think is... It's not that they're not capable of editing, but they don't read as an editor. I, you know, I now read a book. Yeah. As an mm -hmm. editor. That makes sense. Yeah. And in fact, mm -hmm. I can't, I can't read a book without finding mistakes. 
I do that a lot too because I, <laughs> I do a lot of beta reading for people yes. for friends of friends and Bambi sends a lot of beta reads to me and I do a lot of beta reading for me for for, for people and I uh, I find myself editing as I do it so you know I try to correct all the spellings as I go and, and then if I find any inconsistency I definitely call it out to the author so that they know and that's, that's what they good. want to know yes, I do a little bit of editing myself but and it's very hard to edit yourself yes your own story Mm hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, while we're still on the subject of Hammers and Roses, um, the book itself is fantastic. You really become invested in the characters like they become friends. And so when something mm -hmm. happens in the book, I, I, I caught myself going ah! a couple of times, you know, because of something that would happen <laughs> to, to my friend in the book. So it's really worth a read. It's really good for for Ken's first try uh, you would never believe that was the first try because it's that good it's very professional and it's fun oh good good okay so the titles the book titles are what's the first one hammers and roses okay and the second one was the second one is gift of the fallen sympathy for the devil and the third one is the sequel to that gift of the fallen suffer the children okay can you give us a synopsis of what the books are about um, I don't want to give away too much, but <laughs> just a little, just a little, just a little. <laughs> uh, Gift of the Fallen. Um, uh, if you're familiar with, it, you don't have to be real religious for it or anybody, because everybody's heard the tale of the fallen angels, mm -hmm. you know, who disobeyed God and got punished. So they're the fallen. Mm -hmm. Um, they give uh, they give a gift to uh. A human at some point which is to bring him back and he was once he was once one of them and he ends up being uh an assistant to a detective in today's time so and she finds out that he's a that he's an actual angel bambi you'd probably describe it better than me yeah. okay. <laughs> no this was good that was good i know you don't want to give away too much so i'm not pushing you but that, no that was I good i'm trying to hold back on certain things and it's hard i can tell well, here's the thing and, and i don't feel that i have to hold this part back because this is really important if you want to read the book but um the detective becomes involved in some really shady things. I don't mean that she's shady. I mean that, you know, some shady happenings around town and it's um, supernatural basically. So the, that's okay. where the angel comes in and, oh my gosh, there's a couple parts of this book that Ken describes so well that it's ingrained in my head. Like, like it's a book that my mind goes <laughs> back to every now and then. And I think about oh, parts okay. of it really good. And he describes some of the characters like I've, I've never thought of them that way before. And now that's all I think of them as, you know, I mean, it's, it's really good. Sympathy for the Devil is my very favorite book that Ken has written. Um, the, okay. the sequel, Suffer the Children, has the same it brings in the same some of the same characters so you're already used to them yeah. they're already friends you know and um and it involves children obviously and so that's um it's it's just it's just really good there there are a lot of horrors and real life kind of horrors in these books but they're really good. okay and they won't they won't give you nightmares. You know what I mean? I've read books. No, they won't. Oh, okay. I was going to ask, are these for like young adults or for yeah, adults only? Okay. That's what I was just going to add as well, too, because there's some situations in, in my books are like there's a sex scene. It's not very descriptive. Right. You know, it's not like a pornographic movie. It's okay. not very descriptive at all. And there's some bloody instances that aren't too, too descriptive as well either. You get the point. But you're not grossed out completely by it. Exactly. Gotcha. Gotcha. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, I okay. think I think anybody could pretty much read them, you know, and and uh, and be okay with it. Yeah, it could definitely be young adult. Yeah, and okay. you know, your imagination cool. can always be worse than reality, anyway. 
Yeah. yeah. Especially when you're reading, yes. you can, you can fill it in yeah. with your own thoughts based off. Yeah. What you're reading. That makes a good book to me. It was like what you were saying, like how your mind goes back to it. Yes. Um, so that means like the descriptions are like really good. You know, how things were described in detail um, in the characters in the book. Like to me, that makes a really good book. Yeah. When you can picture the room they're in and what's happening in that room. And that's just really amazing. And Ken does a fantastic job with that. That is good. Thank you. Cool. You're welcome. I was hoping to do that. <laughs> I'll expect payment. So, Ken, did you have any meeting. like? <laughs> Say again. Payment. Yeah. She says she'll accept payment at her next meet at you guys' next oh, meeting. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I was also going to ask you, oh, Ken, so I was going to ask you, did you have any, like as a child, some people say, when I was young, I used to daydream about this story and decided to write it. Was it that, um, like, were you like that when you were younger or was the, did the inspiration just come as an adult and you were just like, you know what, I'm going to write this story. Like, how did you get into it that way? Like I said earlier, I always had like thoughts in my mind of a situation or something and something I would have a story come to mind and I would think about it. And, you know, it, I just never wrote it down. It's like I had um, I had to take an elective in, in school in my senior year because I didn't get enough credits. So I took creative writing and um, my teacher <laughs> kind of goes back to before her and I didn't used to have the greatest relationships when I was my freshman year because I was a different type of student back then. I was a little rebel. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so I, was, I was trouble back then and me and her didn't get along and she expelled me. So the time oh. I got to my <laughs> senior, time I got to be a senior, I uh, took that elective class and she was the teacher. So our relationship completely turned at that point. And if I could be considered her teacher's pet at that, you know, how our relationship was. And I truly loved that class. And I wrote some things in there. I ended up getting an A in the class. Um, I wrote some things in there that really made her think. <laughs> <laughs> but I always, I was always interested in writing. I just never did anything until, like I said, I wrote something 20 some years ago and my sister and my mom read, read it and they're, my sister still today is where, where are you at on it? Are you done yet? She still wants it to finish, but it's in my list of things to do. That's what I keep telling her. That's good. That's, that's good. I like to hear different stories and how people got started. And it's just funny how a lot of people I've talked to, like, it started when they were young and it does come through. It's like, it's, they say like the stories come through them and then some write it down, some don't. And then like you, you found it like in your senior year, you took that class. I think it sounded like it just clicked. Like that's when everything kind of came together for you. It, it, um, clicked, it clicked to mm -hmm. making me want to do it more, but I just never did it. And like I said, until just recently, the last few years, I just decided, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do it. You know? Yeah. It took, me, it took me to get into 50 years old before I finally put words on the page. Hey, it's never too late, though. It's never too late. That's, no, that's it's really not. good. No, it's not. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's cool. And plus, now you have access to so much more. I mean, you can self-publish and do all kind of things now. Right, you know? right. So that's that's right. good, too. And, and I've, plus, got, I've got so many books in the works right now. I've probably got four different projects that are going. And I haven't been writing much lately because I got in this funk lately that I'm still working on. <laughs> I know. I'm waiting. Is it writer's block? Yeah, he's got writers. Uh, writers yeah, it is. It's like you know, it's weird because I want to write and I have every intention of writing. I'll go down to the basement and sit, and sit on my computer desk and start to write. I'll pull up a document and something will sidetrack me, and the next thing you know, I'm playing a game. I'm like, what did I do? What did I do? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know what's going on. I got to get. I, I just call it a funk. Maybe it's writer's block, but something's going on in my head. It's just keeps pulling me back. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure you'll, you'll come through probably in the summer. You're probably looking for that nice, warm sunshine to hit you. Well, that's funny. You said that because we have this tent that we put up every year and I found that I really enjoy sitting in that in the evenings and writing. Put okay. A picnic table underneath the tent. It's like a canopy tent. Yeah. And we put a picnic table underneath there in a screen it's a screened in put tent so i just go in there sit there zip the screen so i don't get bugs all over me and i'll, I'll write for hours that might be what you need ken that probably is because i do that's one of my favorite places to write is out in that tent i'm gonna hold yeah. you to and see that. we're only a few months away would you say bambi i'm gonna hold you to that ken 
<laughs> you can do that. <laughs> hey, we got it recorded, Bambi, so right. he has to do it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be all over for Twitter to everybody here. Kenny's going to write soon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Awesome. So, hey, guys, let me ask both of you, Can if you want to go first, um, but for upcoming writers, do you have any advice for them as far as just anything you can offer it to help make them maybe a better writer or maybe get over their writer's block or something that you've learned in the process? Okay. Mine's going to sound funny because of what I just said. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sometime a while back on Twitter, someone said this to me and I really liked it. I thought that makes sense. I like that. They said, they said, chair, sit, write. Three simple words to write is see the chair, go sit and write. It's simple. Okay. It's simple, but it's true. That's what you have to do. Just chair, sit and write. And when that funk that I'm in right now gets to you, don't let it consume you. Okay. That makes sense. So it's not like you're conditioning yourself that when you know you sit in that chair, you're going to write. Exactly. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> and that's what, like, when I said I go down there, I said I, my goal is to ch- get in that chair, sit and write, and next thing on, I'm playing tic tac toe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's let's minus the tic tac toe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We got to stop after that period, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh my gosh, what about you, Bambi? Do you have any advice that you like to offer? Um, I would say. You know, I don't have a particular place where I write all the time. Like Ken has his, you know, his desk and I don't really have a desk. And if I, if I get an idea and I don't want to open my laptop and, you know, make my little writing spot, um, I have a notebook and I have written a few of my books a lot by hand, you know, by, by longhand. Wow. I, I I just... I'll just start and all of a sudden I'll have 10 or 12 pages written. Now that means that you have to sit down and type it in, but as I'm typing it in, I can also edit what I wrote, you know, and, and think, well, that's not Mm -hmm. exactly right, but you don't have to, for me, I don't have to have chair sit right. You know, as long as I have a notebook with me or I have my phone that I can record on, I can write in the car while I'm driving. I hit record. I can start talking. You know, so no matter. I've done that a lot too. Yeah. So no matter where you are, you can do this. You do not have to sit yourself down and, you know, be all organized. Just do it. That makes sense. Because you know what? You never know when inspiration is going to hit you. It sometimes just hits you in like the craziest places. You might be at the grocery store. Exactly. Some, exactly. You know, veggies. Yeah. Or what about in the middle of the night? I have gotten up in the middle of the night before and come to my computer and written down whatever I'm thinking of because it won't leave me alone. Wow. That's the good stuff right there. That has I've actually done that too as well. Yeah. And, it's yeah. happened to me. I've been driving down the road and thought to myself, I got an idea and I'll just be like, Hey Siri, open notepad yes. you know, and tell it what I want, you know, and then just have to get back to it and put it back on paper then. Exactly. Yeah. And I, so I could see that, that stuff mm-hmm. is junk, but it doesn't matter. Once you get it out of your head, you can stop thinking about it and go on with whatever your next thought is going to be, you know, about writing. Um, but yeah, just, just do it. My phone you just are. open notepad. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And it might be something that you use later. You may not use it at that time, yeah. but it may be something that comes up, maybe in another, another project or something. That's true. Yeah. And at least you have it written down. Yeah, you can always flesh it out and detail it later. But yeah, no, that's pretty cool. That's pretty you know, cool. One of the things that I like to do is um, I write blurbs. And one of the services that I offer with my editing is I will write a blurb for the person after I do their book. And I seem to write those in the middle of the night. I seem to go to bed thinking about it and I wake up with the whole blurb, like in the middle of the night, the whole blurb is in my brain and I get up and write it down. Um, so I, I think that sometimes just get up and, and just, just do it. You can go right back to sleep afterwards, but if I don't do it, then yeah. I might really lose a really good idea for a blurb. That is like so interesting how the mind works, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, sometimes it really is. It's a little crazy, but yeah. 
It was. <laughs> But it's working. You're able to offer it as, as a service. I mean, that's and you're helping that author. Yeah. I mean, just think about all the different ways that although it's coming through, in a, you know, maybe in the middle of the night, but it's something that someone can use. And, and I've started. Um, I think that's good. Yeah. I started really like doing the blurbs. And as a matter of fact, um, I'll, I do blurbs for people if they just want the blurb. They just have to give me some information and let me go. And I charge a minimum wow. fee for it. And. And uh, so, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. That's that's pretty cool. So um, did you have anything else you want to add to that, Ken? I have another question for you guys after um, that. No, no, I, I did think it was funny when I said that about Siri. She opened up over here and tried to open up a notepad. <laughs> oh, like <laughs> just now? <laughs> I said that. I said that. <laughs> Tell Siri not this time. Yeah. I know. I had to stop it real quick. Because <laughs> she was recording everything I said. <laughs> oh, gosh. I had, to, I had to couple with that. Darn technology. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, guys, let me ask you both this. Now, I know um, when you have a book, people have to know about your book or else they won't know to buy it. Um, so, my question next is about marketing and what do you do ken to market your book are you using paid ads are you um, no paid ads no paid ads okay no. so what do you do I, to market your book i'm absolutely doing nothing it's word of mouth that's it i i'm no good at marketing um i've never been really good at blowing my own horn type of thing so you know if, if someone brings it up on twitter about it i'll tell them about it i'll show them my pinned tweet is to my amazon page for my books so okay. that's that's Ken, it. That's, so. that's a form of marketing <laughs> okay then i've succeeded at least one thing <laughs> right it's subtle but it's a form of marketing <laughs> yeah, yeah. you have twitter You're using social media <laughs> i have twitter i have a i have a um a web page that's kind of still it's functional but it's still under construction i'm not completely happy with it but it's got the books on it it's got some blogs i was writing from time to time that i don't do too often, but um, I have Twitter, Facebook, I have an Instagram, but I do nothing with them. I don't know how to. So you don't post at all about your book? No, no, I don't know. I really don't know how to. <laughs> okay. We got to work on that. We got to work on that. Can't we? I know. I, that's what Amy was telling me earlier too. <laughs> we got to yeah. do something. And she keeps telling me to do, do those paid ads on Amazon and I keep one too. Her and I got to sit down one of these days and work, walk through it and get me set up on some of those. I'm, I'm certainly willing to try them. Yeah. I keep offering. So Bambi, you're using, you're using paid ads, Bambi. Yeah. I use Amazon and I keep okay. wanting Ken to do that. And I'm, I've been pressuring him a little bit to do something because I like his books well enough. And I think that everyone would really like to read them. Once they start reading them, they're going to read all three. And I keep kind of pressuring him to, to do that or to at least post about them or, you know, somehow get the word out instead of just not doing anything. Because, you know, you cannot expect someone to find your book without pushing it a little bit. And I know he just, right. yeah, because there's so That's much out there. there. There's is. so much out there. And I, oh, yeah, there is yeah. Ken always says, I don't want to be that person who pushes my books. Exactly. <laughs> Unfortunately, you have to be, we're all that guy. You, you have yeah, to there's just a way to do it. Yeah. yeah. Like even this, like us doing the show together, like yeah. we're learning about the author, right? And the editor yeah, that's right. <laughs> of this <Yeah>. book, <laughs> which is good. It's indirect, but in a sense to me, it's very powerful because you don't get that in your book. You know, people, they want to know about who's behind the story. And that's why I like doing the podcast because it gives authors and other entrepreneurs the opportunity to share information about themselves. So now we not only know about your books and the titles, but now we know about Ken, the author, you know, and people like to connect, you know, there's always something that we can find in common with one another. And I think that's what helps people to be customers. Uh, at least that's, that's what I found through my business is that, people they can connect with me and um, or with our business and it's like oh we have something in common or we're solving a problem um, in, in the case of what my business is but just being able to 
have a way to connect with by way of the podcast, I think is um, very, very helpful. So you definitely will be able to share this, Ken, and also on your website too, both of you. Okay. Um, so this, yeah. this, this, this podcast is another step into the marketing world for me. It is, it is. Okay. And it's very powerful because <laughs> now they're hearing your voice. They're learning about you and you're able to share it. You can share as much as you like and people are going to learn more about you. And I think, you know, they say a, a educated customer is the best customer, you know, so now they're, yeah. they're learning about Ken. And they're learning about Bambi, you know? So I think it's good. I think it's good. It is good. People are, are looking, li- readers are looking for writers that they can relate to, not only in their mm-hmm. writing, but in their personal lives. And I think that because when we're on Twitter, we're talking mostly with our kind, so to speak, you know, with, um, mm-hmm. with the writing community. And so we're yes. all in there. We're all pushing our books to each other. And it just seems like it's nothing but book, book, book. And, you know, but when a reader steps into that world, they see it completely different than the writer does. So you really have to realize mm-hmm. it's not just the people that you communicate with every day. It's those people who are strangers. They want to relate to you. True. Very true. Very yes. true. And people use uh, social media to search on products or search about services because they want to know what others are saying yep. about that particular product or service or item. So having that out there, it is good. So, but I agree, you know, with Ken, like you don't want to just bombard social media, just, Hey, buy my book, buy my book. Right. Cause I feel like to me that that's not really effective, but to share something complain about that. Yeah. 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 Cause I don't do that. Like I promote other people, you know, their podcasts yeah. and, and books and things like that. But, um, and I have my own book, which I didn't talk about for, I don't know, close to a year. I know. <laughs> I did an audio book in 2020. I didn't tell anyone about it. Um, <laughs> but I talk more about other people's stuff way more than I talk about mine. I do too. I do Especially too. Tim. I talk about Tim's all the time. Tim Radle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had him on the show too. Yeah. Yes. Right. I, yes. I talk about his stuff all the time. Yeah. 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 We, we talk and, and that's cool too. His, and I think it on his podcast. We Say talk, again. We oh, about, yes. Yeah. We talked about your bromance <laughs> on, on his podcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not a romance. He's just my favorite author. He really is. I know. But you know, I yeah, you I definitely uh, you can call it a romance if you want. I don't care. I'm man enough. <laughs> it is, and he agreed. It was and- it was all out of love, Ken. It was it was definitely it was a very sweet. I'm not even gonna I'm not gonna spoil it. You have to hear no, it. It was very sweet. Well, Tim's, it was Tim's definitely a good sweet. guy. Tim's yeah. A good guy. Well, I I don't mind being in a romance with Tim. That's right. <laughs> I think one of the big things when you're on uh, social media like Twitter or something is to make friends. You make friends in the writing community and therefore it's not like you're pushing your book all the time because frankly, I don't really push my books hardly at all on Twitter. And But I've got mm-hmm. a lot of friends on there and occasionally I'll post about editing, but I rarely post about my books and... That's why I do the ad, the paid advertising is so I don't have to constantly post about my books. But I think friendships are important and you can make some really good ones on social media. That's yes, so true. I think, yeah. I think the three of us are a testament of that. Definitely. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I agree. Yeah. The writing community has been, oh, man, just awesome. Like yeah. pretty much every person I've had on my show is because of the writing community on Twitter. Exactly. Not, not Facebook, not Instagram, but Twitter. I mean, it's just been a really, really good experience. I'm just really happy to have connected with you all because I mean, Bambi, wow. This is what your third time with me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and you keep asking what me. Is been nice. What is wrong with Everybody Bambi? Everybody not her again. <laughs> I know, but maybe the the first time we talked, I was like, she could be my friend. I know. I I told Ken already that, you know, it's a good thing we don't live close to each other. So I know we'd be hanging out in the summertime. (laughs) I've got a nice big front porch and we could we could uh, have a cocktail. Oh yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah. Wouldn't yeah. take for me. T- wouldn't take much for me, Bambi. Probably one sip, and I'd be done. <laughs> have a cocktail or seven. It, yes, or seven. Oh, or seven. It doesn't take much seven. for me anymore either. I'm not. I'm not a big drinking, drinker. But, um, but there's really nothing like 
a cold beer and a fresh bag of potato chips in the spring on the porch. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds good. (laughs) Yes. Oh, wow, guys, this this is fun. Ken, okay, I have one more question for both of you. I always ask this since we're wrapping up. Um, I always like to get uh, a last word or words of wisdom. Um, Ken, you can start. Do you have any last words of wisdom that you could share with the audience? Words of wisdom, wow. Yes. I don't know. It's Think of all your past experience or even maybe um, like a famous quote or a quote that you like. The only thing I can keep, I keep thinking about is the chair sit right. Just got to do it. Okay. Okay. You just, you just got to do it. When, when you know, you got the thoughts in your hair, your head, chair, sit right. Get it down. Sounds good. Sounds good. What about you, Bambi? Um, you know, I'm going to go with my old standby, my favorite quote that there was that there is and I don't know who ever said it but um leap and a net will appear and I think I've lived my life that way I've always jumped in with both feet and whatever I wanted to do and if it's meant to work out it certainly has worked out for me I like that leap and a net will appear yep Okay. I like that. I like that, Bambi. Yeah, me too. I love, right. I love yeah. your daily ins- or your Monday inspirations, Shantae on Facebook. Oh, they're fantastic. Thank you. Yes. I love them. Thank so you. keep posting them because they're just, uh, <laughs> they're, they're just really nice. <laughs> Thank you. I will definitely keep doing that. They, they keep me going. Yeah. I just, you gotta have that, you know, it's like, I don't know. It's just, we're bombarded with so many messages all the time. And I like to just like, stop everything take that moment and put those out there and i mean it's not just on there like i actually literally have them on my desk i have those cards like on my desk yeah because it's just sometimes you just want to look at something just to refocus recenter your energy bring you back into the now yes you know and just just live you know without just being distracted with other other things that are going on so they, they work they really do work the law of attraction is something that is really strong in me and that mm-hmm. is all part of it. And when you say, you know, you can man, they're good for manifesting and that kind of stuff. They are. And so, yeah, I'm yeah. right there with you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for letting me know you appreciate those. Not everyone says everything or says things. So I just to hear it yeah. warms my heart really does. <laughs> yeah. I agree. If you guys live closer together, you guys would be trouble. <laughs> I think I told you. you can hear it. You can tell, right, Ken? I can tell right there. I can tell in that little blurb right there. <laughs> <laughs> we manifest some really great things, Bambi. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So let me also get um, your contact information. Ken, we want to know where your book can be purchased. And also, in addition to what you're sharing with me on the show, please email these to me because I'm going to post it as well. Um, But let us know where they can buy your book, where they can find you online, all your social media channels that you're going to start posting to. Um, (laughs) Share all of that too. (laughs) Well, my my books are available on Amazon.com. Just put in Ken Biltz and they'll pop up on there. They'll be right there, blurred together, stuck together. Um, and then I have a KenBiltz.com website. Like I said, it's functional, but it's still under construction. I mean, you could go in there and ask me questions on it and I'll get an email and answer you. Um, I'm at Twitter at KenBiltz1 because Ken Biltz taken by Ken Biltz when he didn't know what he was doing on Twitter and forgot his password (laughs) when he finally got back in he had to use one (laughs) and then facebook and instagram i'm ken builds on each of them as well so awesome awesome we'll make sure we connect i know we're connected on twitter ken but i'll make sure we connect on facebook as well i'll reach out to you so we can connect okay okay Okay. and um i sent all these all these to you in that uh, little document i filled out for you but if you need it again i'll we'll send it again for you if you like You know what? I see it right here. I ha- I have it. I have everything. Okay. Yep. I got your Twitter, okay. Facebook, Instagram, and your website and the Amazon right. link. Okay. Right, good. Yep. We'll get those out there for you. Okay. And Bambi, share um, your contact information. Actually, I'm on Twitter and Facebook and everything. And you can usually find me by just putting my name in, but you can find 
anything you want to know on my um, website, and it's bambisummers.com, and Summers is S-O-M-M-E-R-S. And it's even got my awesome. email on my website, so if you want to contact me, feel free. Love to hear from you. Perfect. Perfect. All right, Ken and Bambi, this was fun. It was. I just, I enjoyed you. both of you guys' company today. <laughs> well, I thank you for this opportunity, Shante. I really do. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate it. I just love having guests. I learned so much from you all, and I just love sharing. So, <laughs> for everyone else who listens, I mean, they're definitely getting just you know good advice and good information from people who have done it. You know, so you guys have written books, Bambi, you've edited, you've written books, and everyone has their own unique story. And I just love to hear how people take different paths and we still end up in this one spot together, but we took different ways to get there. And I just think that's beautiful. I think that's what makes us human in a sense. It's like we all have our own path our own story our own journey but we can still come together like this like on the internet and just meet and have these wonderful conversations and share our experiences and learn and grow from each other so i do appreciate you both being here with me well this was my very first ever interview so thank you very much oh well, cool <laughs> you did mention that before yeah well thank you yes. for allowing me to be your first <laughs> i've never been interviewed before this is the first time <laughs> <laughs> Bambi. This, this may not see, be see going the in the direction we want to take it. <laughs> do you see the trouble I was talking about? I do. <laughs> I didn't think about it until after I said it. <laughs> That's when I started laughing. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Oh, gosh. <laughs> and this is without wine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Good. Not in this right here. <laughs> right. <laughs> Before it goes any crazier. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get on my show. Sorry, guys. I mean, it just... <laughs> Oh, goodness. Lots of laughs. Lots of love. I love it. I love it. I really do. Okay, guys. <laughs> We're going to wrap this up. <laughs> Once again, thank you very much, Shantae. You're welcome. Thank and you. Thank you, too, Mammy. Thank you. All right, everyone. So, again, thank you guys for being on the show with me. And before we come to a close, I do want to mention two of my favorite podcasters. Um, one is York Campbell, and he is the creator of the Poetic Earthlings podcast. And you can hear his podcast at PoeticEarthlings.com. I also want to mention that I have done um, voice work. I'm saying voice work. I guess it's kind of voice acting. I don't know. It's not like serious acting, but it's been fun. Um, I've done some episodes with him and his um, his group, his team, um, on the Poetic Earthlings podcast. So you will hear my voice in some of it and some of the episodes um, on his website and his podcast. And also, there's a new podcaster, Tiffany C. Lewis, and she is the host of Beta Reader Bits. And you can hear her podcast at betareaderbits.podbean.com. Com. And she's also been a guest on the show as well, but she shared a lot of information about beta reading that I did not know until I heard her podcast. So if any author um, could learn anything from her, because I, th- I thought it was just uh, really good info and she knows her stuff. So check it out again. It's at betareaderbits.podbean.com. And then also remember to visit Plan Mindfully to get your principal positive mindset affirmation cards. And just so that you know, When you affirm something, you do begin to stir the energies of the universe into action. And those cards are definitely a tool to help you to bring positive changes into your life. Now, for all of the authors, the entrepreneurs, self-starters, and everyone who has taken the leap and doing their own thing, remember the code. The journey begins when you take the first step. Courage optimism, determination, and enthusiasm are the tools that will help you along the way. Until next time.
Thank you for joining me on this episode of the Call to Action Podcast. Make sure to visit me at ctamarketing.biz. There you can find articles for entrepreneurs and self-starters on tech and tips related to navigating this ever-changing world. Until next time.